We begin today with Wizard Kelly selling pipe dreams to young black youth to get them to live like a wizard. I think he's teaching the kids magic. Double entendre, don't ask me how. All you have to do is answer some simple riddles, find some hidden treasure, then guess the winning phrase. It's that easy, y'all. This offer is open to everyone except the family of Proud Snack employees. Everyone is excited to run out to enter. That is everyone except Penny, of course. Luckily, she is allowed to enter into the jacking going on around the corner when the Gross Sisters run their pockets. They're woefully underfunded and that has the Gross Sisters contemplating getting real jobs. The girls offer nothing but excuses so the Gross Sisters use violence to motivate them. Now it's time for Joker from next Friday to use that lesson and motivate the Gross Sisters to redistribute their newly acquired wealth. After getting their street tax, they let the Gross Sisters know that this is alto turf. Dijanae walks up and asks who Sticky's friends are. Joker is punched, the white dude with dreads is stomp, and the black dude with male pattern baldness is slap. Master. Together, they're the Altos! La Cienega loves the thought of singing Robin Hood's finessing the finessers, but the Altos let them know that they're equal opportunity fundraisers. They'll take money from anyone. They even help explain the distributive property of money. If you get robbed, then I rob the thief. You just gotta mind your business. The girls try pressing Sticky for a cash rebate, but he lets them know that what's done is done. The next day, the girls are around the lunch table hating on the Altos for robbing slash serenading them. Dijanae runs up out of breath with a shocking revelation. Sticky's parents are getting divorced. This weekend, his dad moved to a motel and Sticky has been tripping ever since. At that moment, they tuck their chains because they see Sticky fingers walking up. He ends up just throwing singles all over the table like it's Magic City. Joining the gang made Sticky cool as hell. Apparently, the Altos have dyscalculia, so they're using Sticky as the treasurer. Penny wants an explanation for the annexation of their shekels earlier, and he lets them know that it's a secret society, shorty. All we ask is trust. After La Cienega tries to roast his family, he starts getting all emo about his divorced parents, and Dijanae uses that as an excuse to harass him. Sticky spots his squad walking up, so he introduces the girls to Bobby Robinson. That's to say, the girls got robbed twice. Now the gang is on their way to Jack Like Jill falling down a hill, and if you forgot, they're the Altos. Back at the Prowl household, Oscar is complaining about getting finessed by Wizard Kelly. Wiz's name is on the poster four times while his is only on it once in the fine print and is misspelled prune snacks. Sugar Mama has one of these paddle balls on a string toys and why does that toy always look so fun in cartoons? In real life, those things are just an inferior version of the cup on a stick game and I will not apologize for saying it. As they say, irregardless, Oscar says, the only prune he knows is Sugar Mama and she dots his ass up. Trudy tells Oscar that it's all his fault because he didn't listen to her when she told him to get everything in writing. Oscar tries to call Trudy unsupportive and she reminds him that her paycheck does that every week, which hot damn, Oscar needs to sit in a corner or something. Penny comes out rightfully scared that they're gonna get a divorce and Oscar lets her know that he would never slip up and fumble a yellow bone who pays all his bills, support his business and lets his mama live in a house? Penny starts airing out all of Sticky's business and after all the strong arm robberies are mentioned, Sugar Mama is ready to put her strong arms on someone. Trudy suggests that Oscar talks to Sticky and becomes a male role model for him, so Sticky's gonna grow up to be a bum, unfortunately. Oscar's whole family hugs him and tells him that he's their hero. Sugar Mama hopes that Zeus doesn't send a lightning bolt at their ass for lying. The next day, we arrive at the Proud family facilities sponsored by Trudy Proud. Oscar's office is in a state of disrepair. Somebody needs to call the health inspector. This fly straight perishes after just landing on a bowl of Proud snacks. Oscar starts lying to save face and says that was really his Proud bug trap, which would probably be more effective. He'd probably actually turn a profit. Penny dips the hell out before being stuck in this nuclear waste dump. Oscar takes Sticky on the tour of this place and this has to be child endangerment. He takes him to the recipe room, but it's just some dusty ass room with flies and possibly something rotting. But that's the point. The recipe is all in Oscar's deranged mind, so we know it can't be FDA approved. Next, he takes them over to the R&D room. Regurgitation and disposal. What R&D should stand for is Rico Deposition, because Oscar appears to be trafficking monkeys. Not cool. What's even less cool is he's forcing them to eat his nasty ass prune snacks. He does show us that the monkey hates the snacks until the lady monkey gives it to him. Oscar explains that it could only mean one thing. Women rule. Now he 
takes this young child onto this unmanned, broken ass assembly line without a hard hat or nothing, Oscar Proud is now racking up OSHA violations. It's about the end of the tour and Sticky inquires about this room that is labeled Top Secret, which I could see how that would pique interest. After going on an incoherent rant, Oscar lets Sticky directly into this room labeled Top Secret after telling him that's where they keep the location of the prizes of the scavenger hunt without signing an NDA or nothing. Someone can get Trudy's husband because he's wasting all of her money. Oscar drops Sticky off on this random corner feeling like a big dog, like he really did his big one. Right then, the altos. <clears throat> they actually don't sing it that time. It's just kind of catchy. The Altos come up and they want to know if Sticky got the secret location for the scavenger hunt. Apparently this whole male bonding thing was all part of Sticky's evil plan. He has these x-ray glasses okay, that he used to read the locations without Oscar ever knowing. Joker snatches up the glasses and his first instinct was to try to peep his homie's meat, but luckily he must be wearing lead underwear. Joker tells Sticky that when this is all over, those glasses are his. Sticky can't do nothing but try to get used to limited vision. It's time for the scavenger hunt. Wizard Kelly explains the rules and they're convoluted y'all. Basically, it's the scavenger hunt. You find stuff and you know, hunt for scavengers. Before we get started, it's time for a word from the co-sponsor, Oliver Prune. Before Oscar can correct him, the Wiz snatches the mic like Diddy was trying to rap with him. Wiz has his wife, Ginger S. Kelly, and the S is for snaps, y'all. Let me be the one to explain a joke that might've been more obvious 20 years ago. Wizard Kelly equals Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson's wife name is Cookie. Ginger snaps Cookie. Y'all get the point, y'all. It's time for the scavenger hunt and and for some reason, everyone is riding tandem bikes. I'm not sure if that's another one of the rules. Penny's little friends are a team and they're clueless. The Chang triplets are another team and they're using some type of GPS. I think they're also cheating. The Grove sisters are following right behind the Chang triplets, ready to relieve them of anything they find. Apparently, this is just a competition to see who can cheat the best. Penny's little friends arrive at Wiz Sporting Goods and the Altos are already pulling off. Now the Chang triplets pull up on Wiz Burgers and the Altos are already pulling off. Now, they all pull up on this Magic Johnson theater that's only playing one movie, El Gringo. And guess what? The Altos are already pulling off. It's pretty clear that they have to be cheating because there's no way they could be beating the Chang triplets. Obviously, because they were cheating hard as hell publicly. So only way you could beat them is to cheat secretly. While these goofies are trying to get their Barnaby Jones on, the Altos are speeding way ahead of them. They only have one more item left and Stick is excited that they get to live like a wizard for a day. Joker lets it be known that he has plans on living like a wizard for life. Once they get in Wiz's crib, they're laying everybody down and repossessing their possessions. The Altos are going from petty theft to straight up B&E in like three days. If they survive past this episode, Joker might stick up the Federal Reserve. Sticky ain't built for this street life, so he goes tattling to Penny. Now he's trying to renege because he's scared to get his ass beat, so Penny tells him that if he won't snitch, then she will. On stage, Wiz lets it be known that the results have nothing to do with him after he hears people screaming about this BS. Wiz chooses this point to let Oliver Prune take the reins. Oliver beckons for the Altos and Penny is warming up her snitch strings. Before she can sing, Sticky whistles a snitch bird's tune. He runs on stage and gets to telling. The Altos are ready to teach him a lesson on stitches or ditches or getting packed up like knishes. Sticky realizes an important lesson. You can't get your ass beat if you have overwhelming numbers. Oh, no, we should pack him out, blood. Like, we should all just jump him. As a punishment, they illegally detain the Altos and put them in this cage and feed them these nasty nasty as pro snacks. Where are these kids' parents? Or like the proper authorities? Because this has to be kidnapping. The episode ends with the proud Zaw getting admittance to this poppin' soiree at Wiz's house, y'all. And Oscar is denied entry. Wiz is probably trying to distance himself after Oscar lost it and started locking kids in unlawful custody.